One of the real key things here, Chad, is Motorsport Australia and Race Control have declared this session wet, so some teams can run on wet tyres if they like. It's um, race situation I've ever been in. I, yeah, literally when you're going down the straight and you can't see the walls beside you, you get um, yeah, a little bit lost. But um, yeah, thankfully we brought it home safe and um, hopefully we get some, some better racing conditions today because it'll be awesome to, to be able to show the, the speed that we've really got in the car. Appreciate it, guys. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of toe out on that left rear there, Chad. So coming down through the S's here, just getting wide. Is that a loose hey, wheel nut on the left feeling. rear there with that swarf that's come out? And we saw something very similar when Kai Allen's right front wheel nut came undone. So I wonder there, can't really see from that shot, Chad, whether or not the nut was loose first. But what we can see is that that left rear has had a uh, toe adjustment courtesy of the concrete wall and now has a massive amount of toe out. Yeah, he got down into the very quick lap times at 2.07.4 yesterday. And not quite on that speed right now, but at 2.09 is healthy. That's where the speed was a couple of years ago. And did you see Zane Morse's tyre trolley there? There were some slicks that were marked up with a paint, uh, pink marker to reflect the colour of his car that said on the tyre, real men wear pink shirts. Yeah, I love that. We might see quite the track evolution here as the Bushwhacker car does a little bit of exactly that. Going down through, splashing its way through the mud. Reef McCarthy taking over car triple nine. Typically powered by Jay Robot, who's stepping out of Super 2 to focus this weekend on his first ever supercar start. We wish him well. Young man from Lanceville. Handed that over to another kid from Melbourne. Based out in Wyandotte. Right, at this stage, we still think the green tyres. So we suburbs. still think Fox. We still think Fox. And you'll get your lap in. What sort of lap time can he light up here? Will he have time to get around, get back into the pitch and go to a green tyre at the end of this one as he slots in behind Ty Leveringham. The Nissan sit one and two. Very 1992. Go Ty Leveringham pole position. And that's a nice lap. 207.7. Jay yeah. Hansen goes to fifth. And there we go. I feel like that's a more indicative lap time of what we're going to see here. It's closer to what we got yesterday. I like low lap times. You know that. Absolutely. Typically, a 9 a.m. session would lead to very quick lap times here at the mountain as Everingham shoots his best lap time through. It's 207.5. You're not getting there yet. Whoa, Reef McCarthy. We saw him going slow earlier at the chase, and there could be a reason for that because he high fived the ball pretty hard across the middle grate. So unlike the Matt McLean incident that we saw a couple of laps ago, which was just a, what I'm going to call a light graze, this one is a Ooh. decent old whack, and particularly on that right rear tyre and wheel, look at the state of it. It's bent the rim, it's done damage to the right rear suspension and corner. Uh, he'll be going slow and making his way straight into the pit lane. I'd say that's qualifying session over. Sector time showing he's six tenths away from where he needs to be. Has he found something at the end? Championship leader needs to jump up, and he does. He gets himself to the second row second right row, when he needed it. Uh, so and here's one, that moment four, from Missouri's. Wow, that was a wild slide, and the front of that car unhappy. And the question is, has he made contact out there on the road, or is it a hangover from yesterday's incident? Now then, to the main championship combatant that's fighting with Fraser. And he had a good lap earlier, but as they all have come home, he's dropped down to nine. Zach Best, can he fight back? Yesterday's race winner. He's a little bit away yeah. here, Chad, but it's good enough for third position. Traffic up ahead, made a mistake, and it got worse as the lap went on, but Tyler Everingham, that was a massive result. Yeah, nicely done. His first pole here, and it is pole number two for the season, so well done to Tyler. Matt Payne on the front row. It's an all Nissan front row. And over the page, we've got Andrew Missouri's outside the top ten. Kai Allen held on for eight. That's just, again, what more do you want to say about this guy? <laughs> we can't say enough, can we? He's doing a terrific job. He was the class of the field for Super 3, and he's well and truly in the mix with Super 2 in the older machinery. OK, let's celebrate here. Armour or Pole Award. He didn't get this moment at Sandown because it came after the fact with a penalty to Matt Payne, but now he can relish in the moment. He'll be on the grid tomorrow, driving with Scott Pye at Team 18. And the rapid young kid from Dubbo has taken his second pole of the year and proving that he has what it takes to be in the great race this weekend. Congratulations, Tyler Everingham, picking up another career pole award.